Hi, hey, hello, welcome. Today we're going to be doing a Joker performance tier list. I've done a ranking of this before, but that video has been deleted for a while and was dog shit anyway, so today we'll be tackling it again, but in a tier list format, because it makes writing these things easier. When it comes to the tiers, we're going based off of my scoring system. If you need an explanation of that, it's in the card. And my one rule for what counts as a performance is it has to be from something officially licensed by Warner Brothers. Enough wasting time, let's get into this. Wayne Tech promised an electric car by this year. I put a deposit down. Where's my goddamn electric car, Bruce? Starting off strong, we have Alan Tudyk, the voice in the Harley Quinn animated series, and this actually sets up future voice performances on the list as well. The show has a very specific kind of vibe, and Alan's able to bring in a performance that both works well with that vibe, along with still sounding like the Joker, and he's incredibly entertaining. He never ceases to make me smile just by hearing him, and that's a great thing in the performance for the character. After all, his name is The Joker. I put Alan Tudyk, and that's my shit. Hello, darling. So glad you could make it. Where have you been all my life? <laughs> Alan and Lowe's performance is iconic for how fucking terrible it is. The rest of the game is famously terrible as well, so obviously the voice acting has to follow suit. Alan is a special kind of performance for me, where it breaches into so bad it's good kind of territory. Like, Jesus Christ, his laugh sounds like Gabriel Iglesias' girl laugh. <laughs> It puts a smile on my face, but because it's just so bad that it's hilarious and I can't help but laugh from it. He's going in two and a half, because that's the only score I have that's so bad it's good belongs to. I believed in you, Batman. Like I never believed in anything. And it was all a lie! Sean. <laughs> it's Joker! <laughs> Anthony and Gruber is an interesting performance because the character doesn't initially start out as the Joker, but instead John Doe, an asylum inmate who's on the brink of snapping but never fully does for most of the story. Now, I've never played the game, just seen clips of the character for this video, and when it comes to him as John Doe, his performance is alright. I could definitely get that vibe of a man who's about ready to snap, but without hearing much of the Joker in it. Which I guess is good, since it saves that until he actually dons the title of the Clown Prince of Crime, which once he does, the performance is pretty good. He's got the laugh down, and the voice sounds like the Joker to me. Not really a favorite, but not bad. Oh boy, yeah. You two have so much in common. Only thought. In and we already have an unpopular opinion. I don't mind the Joker scene in Batman 22. I would love to go more into it in my review. It helps give it that animated series vibe by showing Arkham Asylum and one of the inmates. Now, yeah, they could have chosen literally any other character and it would still make sense. Or even better, choose a character that the Riddler would naturally vibe off in the comics. But gotta put in the Joker because he's popular. It's whatever, I don't really care about it. Now the thing I do care about is the performance of the Joker, which in this case is Barry Keoghan, and I'm sorry, but I just don't really get it. Nothing in his performance do I really get Joker vibes from. I don't get crazy from this dude, I get meth vibes if I'm being real. This Joker didn't fall into a vat of acid, he just does meth. But I don't hate it. It's one of the performances of all time. Eh? The bat's right behind me, isn't he? I object! <laughs> Brent Spiner is a very interesting one, because I found out after my initial ranking that the majority opinion is that he sucks. Now, I can't speak as to why I initially liked his voice, because I no longer remember, but now when I hear it, it just sounds like a less cringe Jared Leto. But like, he's not really that good. Sometimes he has his funny moments, but that's basically it. He just reminds me of Jared Leto's Joker, only without the fuckboy. Truly one of the performances of all time. Oh, so hard holding on to us Rios. <clears throat> it's enough to drive you mad. <laughs> Cameron Monaghan is, again, a very interesting Joker because technically he's played two different versions of the character and none of them have been called the Joker as far as I know. I'll be honest, I haven't seen the show and I don't really have any interest to, so when it comes to judging Cameron's performance, it's a little tricky, but I'm going to specifically go off of when he looks the most like the Joker. I mean, yeah, he looks like he's got 27 years of crack abuse on him, but there's the white face, red lips, purple jacket, and I guess strands of green hair. So it's enough for me to say that this is him as the Joker. 
With that being said, his performance is all right. There's your natural Heath Ledgerism in any live action Joker performance post 2008, but it doesn't really come across as a full on attempt at copying Heath Ledger. Cameron brings in his own spin on things and I could definitely hear the Joker coming out of him, getting some sense of chaos inside that brain and the way he barely reacts to anything is a nice touch, but overall it's not something that I love. Like I said, an all right Joker performance, but nothing fantastic. Midland. Never again will Batman have the advantage over me with that utility belt of his. But I, the Clown Prince of Crime, have found the answer to it. What is it, Joker? My own utility belt! Cesar Romero was just so much goddamn fun to watch. I can't not love seeing him anytime he shows up, and I've grown even more of a love for the Batman 66 show over the years. I've been praising this performance for years now, and I still think he's incredibly great. For a cheesy kids show from 1966, Caesar nails the Joker's manic energy and truly does live in true chaos for that time. I can't help but love it, that's my shit. Standing ovation? Did not expect that, but I'll take it, and also everything else. I think Christopher Corey Smith is a pretty good Joker. Nothing ranking topping or iconic, but he brings in enough chaos to the voice that it definitely sounds like a Joker. And the way he delivers some of his words is very unique to his performance. He's got a nice sense of timing as well, knowing when to drop his voice at the right times to land the punchline. I give it an old boy yeah. Yes, it's enough to put a frown even on my jolly face. So while Corey Burton's performance is from 2011, he's basically doing an impression of the 70s Jokers. Larry Storr, Lenny Weinrib, and while being from 85, Frank Welker, who did a similar performance. Raise your doubts, my web-footed friend. This time, the Joker will have the last laugh. <laughs> yes, sir. There's nothing like the sound of laughter to make a house a home. <laughs> None of these are terrible, and when it comes to emulating a style from 40 years ago, Corey does a pretty good job. I genuinely thought he was from the 70s before writing this part, but they are very of their time, and in terms of how I hear the Joker, haven't really aged well. So I'm just gonna put all four of these performances in Midland. This is how you exterminate a bat! <laughs> Curtis Armstrong is a weird one because his performance is just for OnStar commercials from 2000, and in his case, only one. But by going off the clip, he's got the bare minimum for the voice and the laugh for it to work. I don't think I'd ever want to see this again, let alone in a show or movie, but for what they needed, Curtis was able to bring it. Midland. Let's give this computer a cold <laughs> to slow you down. Did you bring any chicken soup? Batman. Dave Wittenberg plays the character in the Lego Batman movie DLC for Lego Dimensions, which means technically he's Zach Galifianakis' is his Joker. And while he's far better than Zach in every way possible, I still don't really hear the Joker much in his performance. Like, obviously, I hear the Joker in his voice more than I ever could in Zach's, but there's nothing really in it that gives me that thriving chaos. One of the performances of all time. <laughs> Listen, I like D. Bradley Baker, but literally all he had to do was provide a Joker laugh and he couldn't even do that. Send him off to Denmark. <laughs> In strong contrast, Great Delisle is another performance where all she had to do was provide a laugh and she did great. That laugh sounds like a woman version of Troy Baker or Mark Hamill's laugh and it really makes me wish the Flashpoint Joker had more screen time in the movie and dialogue allowing us to possibly hear a full on Grail Delisle Joker performance, but instead all we got is the laugh. It's a pretty good laugh though. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> Could you please just give me a minute? <laughs> Heath Ledger. What is there that I could say about this performance that hasn't already been said by myself in the entire world? When it comes to live action performances, he still reigns as supreme. The manic energy, the chaos, the way he moves, the shape of his voice, everything about his performance is perfection, but you already knew that. I don't think there's anything I could say that you don't already know. 10 gold blooms. You idiot. You made me, remember? You dropped me into that vat of chemicals. That wasn't easy to get over. And don't think that I didn't try. Jack Nicholson is an iconic performance and for good reason. He nails the vital chaos, his voice is full of insanity, the laugh is great, and I hear a lot of Mark Hamill in it, which is impressive given how this was Mark's predecessor. Obviously it would go hearing Jack Nicholson and Mark, especially if you were around for Batman 89's release or grew up on it, 
but I grew up on Mark's performance for years before I even heard Jax. So to hear a bit of one of his successors who would go on to be the definitive voice in his initial performance is pretty remarkable if you ask me. With that being said, while it's great, I don't have much of a personal attachment to it. I like it, but I don't really love it. Oh boy, yeah. I'm down to my last joke anyway. But this one will kill ya. Okay, to be fair, James Patrick Stewart was playing a character called the Jester, who as far as I know is basically the Joker, but good, I think. Regardless, James brings in a decent performance. I can hear the Joker. This certainly sounds like a Joker performance. If he actually did play the Joker, it would probably be fine, but it's nothing special. Midland. How many alternate timelines do you destroy the world? Because, frankly, you don't have the colonies to die yourself. Time and time again, I have made attempts to defend this performance. I still think that he's good at the very, very last scene of Suicide Squad, and he has his moments in the Snyder Cut, but the overall performance and most of the scenes that he's in is fucking terrible. This isn't chaos, this is cringe. And not even cringe in a I'm the Joker baby kind of way, but cringe because he's basically a fuckboy. I don't see a man who's insane, I see a man who thinks he's insane while he flexes on IG Live or whatever the hell the fuckboys do nowadays, I have no idea. I haven't been in high school since the pandemic. So given the microscopic positives, I would put him in Yankee Stadium, but the fact that the man had five years to take the criticism given to him and restructure his performance and make it better, and instead he's just a little less worse, makes me want to send it off to Denmark. Jared Leto is just incapable of playing the Joker. Oh, Spoonie, isn't it wonderful? With Batsy gone, all of Gotham is our own funhouse. Jason Spizak isn't terrible, but he's not good. He's got the tone of the voice, but with none of the chaos, making it a very nothing performance. Compared to other Lego performances, Christopher Corey Smith easily tops him for miles, and even Dave Wittenberg sounds better. There's just something from this that's missing, which causes me to not really like it. At the very least, it's easy to listen to, but that's about it. Yankee Stadium. But inside, I'm one very sad clown. So crazy thought! You and I team against our common foe. Jeff Ben is a performance that I've come around to, and it's very hard to explain why. I still don't think this man sounds like the Joker, but given the context of his performance being in The Brave and the Bold, where it's supposed to be that kind of old school cartoony Batman, it's made it make a little bit of sense. And also at the same time, while I don't hear much of the Joker in his performance, I would be lying if I said I still don't have a massive smile while hearing it. It's not that I like it in a so bad it's good kind of way. I just like it. And I don't know why. <laughs> There's just something about it that's so entertaining to me. I'ma put him in oh boy yeah. Whenever I meet new folks, I like to have an out prepared, you know, in case our first combo hits one of those awkward lulls. And no offense, but this is one of those lols. <laughs> Jeremiah Watkins fits the tone of the show that he's in, or at least based off of what I've seen. DC Superhero Girls looks like the generic kids cartoon for the modern day. I'll be honest, I haven't seen it, so I'm just going off of the clip with the Joker in it along with the art style and animation, and it just gives me those vibes. It's not a show that I expect deep, serious conversations to be said like Teen Titans, but at the same time, I feel like I'd probably be going too far if I compared it to Teen Titans Go. And not to say that every cartoon needs to have a deep, serious conversation to be said. Like, it can just be dumb fun, that's fine. And with that being said, given that vibe that I get, Jeremiah's performance fits. He's not bad by any means, but he sounds like a Happy Meal toy joker, and that's fine for the show, but other than that, nothing I can really hear in anything else. Midland. What do you get? I don't think so. When you cross I think a mentally ill loner with a it. society that abandons him and takes him like trash! Call the police, I'll man. tell you what you get! Call the police! Get what you fucking deserve! Oh boy, Joaquin Phoenix. One of the two good things from Joker 2019, and even then... Look, it's not his fault. Joaquin Phoenix is an incredible actor that brings in an incredible performance. He really nails every aspect of a mentally ill loner that one day breaks. The problem is, the character he's playing isn't the Joker. I don't see a man who's gone insane and loves chaos. I see a Redditor. And like I said, this is not Walking's fault. 
he's just playing the character that was written in the script. And I think he does play it very well, which means I put all the blame on Todd Phillips and Scott Silver, who didn't write the Joker, and instead wrote a loner who one day snaps and decides to start acting like he's all crazy and shit, and instead he's just cringe. And by cringe, I don't mean the Jared Leto cringe where it's try hard to the point of pathetic. It's more like cringe as in seeing old political tweets you made at a young age despite knowing nothing about politics. I mean, fuck's sake, the fact that they had Joker say that we won't werewolf and go wild? That doesn't sound like the Joker. That sounds like a 14 year old on Facebook. Whenever I think of that line, I don't envision the Joker howling in laughter as Gotham burns behind him. I envision there are two wolves inside of you, cringe and cringe. I'm gonna have to stop before this becomes the unofficial Why Joker 2019 is Bad video essay. Point is, while I think Joaquin is good at the character he plays, I don't think the character is the Joker, which complicates things a bit when trying to rank it, so I'll settle with putting him in Midland. Mostly just because the laugh is on point. I'll need some guys. Not these guys, because, well, they're kind of dead. I love John DiMaggio's performance. I mean, to be fair, I love John DiMaggio, but his Joker specifically is just so good. It oozes the chaos that it needs, forces me to smile and laugh out of pure enjoyment like any great Joker voice, while all doing it so low-key. Playing into the lower register of his voice, unlike most Jokers, gives it its own unique DiMaggio spin on the character, and I think John pulled it off extremely well. It doesn't go in disgusting territory like other performances, it lands right where it needs to, sounding like the Joker while also being very satisfying to listen to, and I wish John would get cast as the Joker more often, because I'd love to hear this voice again sometime. And I know, Death and the Family exists, but that movie doesn't count because it's basically interactive under the Red Hood, and he is in like two Lego movies, but I can only find one clip and it's just him laughing. Anyways, 10 gold blooms. That's right, Bats. The Joker's back and in a big way. I'm gonna be real with you. This one just makes me uncomfy. <laughs> I don't have words to describe what that was. 10 gold blooms out of 10. What rational being dresses like you? Speaking of threads, think this is a good look for me? Kevin Michael Richardson's Joker is so incredibly underrated and needs more praise. This man was not only following up after Mark Hamill and Jack Nicholson, but he was also the very first ever black man to voice the character, and he shot it right out of the fucking park. The insanity just oozes through his performance. I truly believe not only in the universe of the Batman, but in general that this voice belongs to a man of chaos. If I ever get to make a big budget animated Batman show or movie for Warner Brothers, then I honestly would want to try to get Kevin to come back and play the Joker because that's how much I want to hear this man again. I'm giving him 10 gold blooms. Oh no, this time the joke's on you and the world. <laughs> this performance is just disgusting. Like, hearing this voice makes me want to throw up. Get me as far away from it as humanly possible. I don't know how to really describe it. Everything about this is just bad to me. The weird mid-range gravelly tone. The laugh kind of crawling in, but only after a little hee-hee like a fucking toddler. I don't like any of this. Send it off to Denmark. Lexi, this may be the world's finest supervillain hideout after all. I'll give it to you. Legion of Doom it is. Lloyd Floyd is making an attempt at the 70s voices, but there's still something about it that puts me off, and I don't really know what it is. At least the 70s performances have a bit of Joker in them. I can hear them and reasonably think that they're the Joker, but in something way before my time. With Lloyd, I just hear some random fucking character. I don't even hear a villain, I just hear some random dude. I don't really like it. Send it off to Denmark. Ooh, business sounds like fun. Come, we'll repair the more comfortable environment. Just like with Heath Ledger, is there anything that I have to say? Like, we all know that Mark Hamill is the definitive voice of the Joker, right? Like, he is the Joker? There's no other performance that even comes close to this. Ten gold blooms. You really gotta stop sneaking up on me. It's so predictable. 
Anyway, long story short, big bomb, boom, hundreds dead. You too. What do you think? Michael Dobson is such an underrated performance. Like, this man did the voice for some dubbed black and white comic posted to YouTube. Like, not even a TV show, let alone a movie. And he still brought in one of the best performances I've ever heard. It's just... I hear the chaos. The voice makes me giddy as hell and his delivery and timing for punchlines is so on point that they never cease to make me laugh no matter how many times I've heard them. And that is key to a Joker performance. With that being said, I don't think it's GOAT level or iconic, but it's still an incredibly great performance and I would love to hear it again. That's my shit. <laughs> You're in trouble now. Michael Emerson does a similar thing as John DiMaggio, going into the low register instead of the high, and once again, I think it's done incredibly well. He has a wispiness to his voice, like every word is floating off the edge that gives it this uneasiness. You can tell there's something wrong with this man, keeping your guards up a bit just in case, but you still want to feel a little safe. Like he might be sane and it's just a weird way of speaking, until he turns around and kills a show host while filling the room with laughing gas. Or even when the Joker succeeds in making Batman break his one rule, Michael's voice radiates that proud mocking that the character feels. Absolutely incredible. Ten gold blooms. Truth be told, strings never were my section. I'm much better on the keys. <laughs> Michael McKean appeared in one episode of the Batman animated series, voicing as the Joker in the 1950s, and also causing a sound editor to ask Mark Hamill if he was fired. <laughs> While there were no Joker performances in the 50s, I would think you would go for an adaption of the 70s performances at the very least, or use them for inspiration to get that old-timey feel while still having it sound like the Joker. But McKean does none of this and just talks in what sounds like a normal voice. This barely resembles any bit of the Joker for me, aside from the laugh, which I'll admit is pretty good. So I'm gonna put this performance in Yankee Stadium. Pass Robin, if I drop bars, I take smiles, and I leave scars. Cards in Arkham will admit that the Joker just killed it. Okay, this is breaking my one rule and should not count, but I'm sorry. I've been having to live the past almost four years with the opinion that Nice Peter is one of the best live action Jokers I've ever seen. And I know it shouldn't count because he's rapping, not acting. But the voice is just so on point. That's my shit. Not bad. Differently sane. <laughs> Richard Epcar is... something? I mean, I guess it fits the edgy looking design that the Mortal Kombat and Injustice teams decide to go for. And just like with that design, the voice is barely the Joker. Like, I can somewhat tell this is the Joker, especially when he laughs, but it's not a Joker I enjoy listening to or even capable of making me smile. Truly one of the performances of all time. <laughs> Just like with Grey Delisle, Steve Blum only had sound effects and laughs that he was only able to bring for his performance, given how this was before LEGO started adding dialogue to make their games a million hours long. And just like with Grey, this is a damn good laugh. This sounds like a solid Joker laugh, even for a LEGO game, and I'd be very interested in hearing actual words coming from Steve in this performance. Oh boy, yeah. Oh, that's a joke, right? Batman finally told a joke! <laughs> now, we all know that Tim Curry was going to be the original voice of the Joker in the animated series, but was replaced with Mark Hamill due to Tim being deemed as too scary. Now, he wouldn't be on the list, and initially he wasn't, because I completely forgot that last year we finally got unreleased audio of Tim Curry doing the Joker. And maybe it's because I'm so used to hearing Mark, but Tim just doesn't do much for me. Like, he's not bad. He sounds like a Joker. But the Joker? Eh. I also don't really get the scariness from it, but I'm also not a kid from 1992. With that being said, though, for some reason this just sounds like Tim Curry doing a Joker voice. Like, I never put much thought into wondering what it would sound like, but hearing it now, yeah, this pretty much sounds like what I would have expected. Midland. That's right, Bats. It is I. Damn you! Oh! <laughs> Tony Hale is in the dub for Ninja Batman, and I don't know why, but that just sounds fitting for him. Now, while his Joker voice has hints of Dr. Psycho appearing throughout it, overall it still sounds like the Joker, and for how batshit insane this movie is, somehow his voice just fits with the vibe. Oh boy, yeah. Finish off the kill, and back for more, eh? Bane's still alive. 
Now that's not funny. Troy Baker's debut Joker performance was literally to mimic Mark Hamill, and even with that, I think he brings in his own sound. I can hear the Mark Hamillisms, but it's different enough that I know it's not him, and that's what I like about it. It's still uniquely Troy's. It's got the chaos and energy that a Joker performance needs, and the laugh is on point, all while still sounding like its own voice. I can hear this and go, yeah, that's Troy, instead of, that sounds like someone trying to be Mark. And that, to me at least, is incredible praise. That's my shit. <laughs> Wataru Takagi is interesting because it's the only performance on this list, well, other than that, that's not in English, so I have to go completely off of the sound, which I guess is what you would do for any performance, but there's still that natural disconnect when hearing a language that I don't understand. But with that being said, this does sound like what I would think a Japanese Joker would sound like. Oh boy, yeah. I'm so bad I got myself thrown into this heck hole on purpose! And finally, we have Zach Galifianakis. And I hate this performance. Not only does it sound nothing like the Joker, it's just a reminder of how garbage that movie is and how much I hate it. It's not the worst performance, because that's easily Kevin Polak, but it's still a terrible one that has little to no redeeming factors in my opinion. Send it off to Denmark. And that's the tier list. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments, as well as your own ranking and any performances or other things you'd like to see me make a tier list on. That's all I have to say. Have a good day. Come, come. And of course, everyone has their own opinion. But my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. Subscribe and please.